In this lecture, we'll be seeing how we can make a practical use of the Docker networking concept that we understood in our last lecture. So the basic idea is this. We are going to have two containers and one container is going to be running an application built in ASP.NET and there's going to be another container which is going to be running the SQL Server database itself. So basically this is going to be a container which is going to hold the backend and this is going to be an API. It could be a service, it could be a front end, whatever it is, it is going to be holding that application over here. Now the idea is we need to communicate with these two container using the network that we have created, which is nothing but the test network that we have created using this particular subnet. So how do we actually make the communication? Well, in order to achieve that, we are going to see how we can interact with two container using one network using Docker networking concept. So in order to achieve this idea, we are going to do this. We are going to, first of all, spin up an application which is built using ASP.NET, which is this one, as you can see over here. And I have used this application quite a lot in many of my courses, especially in terms of the automation framework development with Playwright in C-Sharp.NET, API testing with REST-Sharp, and also with end-to-end -end testing with Playwright, automation framework development with Selenium C-Sharp, microservice development, and also in the advanced automation testing of modern apps with C-sharp.net. So I have used this application quite a lot, and I'm gonna be using the same for this particular course as well. So the basic idea is this, this application, if I try to run it, it is going to talk with the SQL server, and then it is going to run from there. So you can see that if I try to run this application locally, it is gonna go and talk to the SQL server, uh, which is going to be sitting in my local machine and then it's going to communicate. But note that the SQL server that I have defined is going to be with the name of SQL server. So there is a SQL server with this name and the DNS is going to resolve this for me automatically. As I told you in our last lecture, the bridge network is going to do this for you automatically. It will automatically resolve the name to the IP address using the automatic DNS resolution. So in order to achieve that, I have did this already and I'm going to also run this application using the docker build command. I know that we have never talked about the docker build yet, but this is going to be just a heads up for you to see how we can build docker image using the docker file and how we can run them. I mean, this is going to be a bit of an off track, but just stay with me for this particular lecture alone. The idea is not to teach you how to build a Docker image or to make you understand the Docker file, but the idea is to just focus on the networking. But this is going to give a bit of an idea for you for the upcoming lectures of this series. But for now, just bear with me. I'm just going to build this particular image alone. So I'm going to uh, do this. I'm going to go to the source code of this application, which is the product API. And if I do an LS, you should see that I have got a Docker file over here. So I'm going to do a Docker build. This is a build command to build an image from the Docker file. And I'm gonna give a tag or the name of this particular application, which is the product API. And I'm also going to give a dot, which is nothing but specifying that the Docker file is in the current location. You just note that currently I don't have any of the image with the ASP.NET application because I have just downloaded the .NET ASP image before starting this particular lecture so that I can save some time. But other than that, I don't really have this product API application at all. So I'm just going to run this right now. And you see that once I do it, it is going to build things for me and it is also going to create an image called as product API. And if I go to this product API over here, uh, you notice that it has got quite a lot of layers there. And all these layers are coming up because that's what I have did over here in this particular Docker file. And it has been created for me. And now I can run this particular container. So in order to run this container, I'm just going to say docker run the product API. But before I do that, I also need to expose the port, which is going to be to my local port of 8080. And the port is just exposed by this particular docker image, which has the source code, is going to be 8001, if I'm not wrong. So you can see that it's currently exposing the port as 8001 in my Docker file. So I'm going to say 8001. And then I need to 
specify the name of the image which is the product api and once i hit enter you will notice that it is going to give me an error saying that this particular driver failed programmatically to connect the endpoint beautiful william because the port number 8000 8080 is already running or has been allocated i think i know what is the problem because you remember in our last lecture we were trying to run the nginx container with the same port number and that's the reason why this allocation is failing so that is very very important concept as well while you have the same port number being used in two containers within your host machine it is always going to clash so it's always better that you don't do that or you always resolve the port number before you actually use it so just for the demonstration purpose, I'm just going to delete the existing container. I'm also going to delete this particular container and I'm going to run this product API container once again. And once I do it, you will notice that the product application product API has already started executing, but it is going to throw me an exception right now. And the exception is nothing but it couldn't able to connect to the SQL Server database because we don't really have a SQL Server up and running at this point of time. So you will see that big exception coming and telling me, especially saying that the server was not accessible because this particular SQL Server doesn't really exist. Well, we know that particular problem. So let's say we go and run the SQL Server as well. So remember in our last lecture, we were trying to discuss about the volumes. We already have the volume and stuff. So I'm just gonna use the same command, but just that there is a change in this particular command is that I'm gonna give a name as hyphen hyphen name as SQL server. This is the only change that I have did in this entire command that we already did like docker run of hyphen E for the environment variable of this accept EULA and also the password and the port number has been exposed and I'm also using the volume, the test volume, if you remember, we already used it. And I'm also gonna use hyphen D for detached mode. And I'm also gonna give the name as SQL Server and the image as the Microsoft SQL image that we have already downloaded, which is this one, right? So now if I try to run this particular image as a container, you should see that we will have a container which is up and running with SQL Server over here. You see that it is currently up and running, which is awesome. And it's also using the volume that we have already created in our last lecture. So that is also coming up, which is great. Now, if I try to run the application, hopefully it should connect, but it won't because as I told you, this particular application, which is the product API application, is running in a different containers. And the SQL Server is also running in a different container. So both of these containers are entirely running in different containers at the moment. And they won't talk to each other unless until you specify the network. So that's the reason why the product API has failed once again miserably. So now I need to connect the SQL Server as well as this product API to the same network so that they both can talk to each other. So how do I actually do that? Remember in our last lecture, we were trying to do a connect syntax. That's exactly what I'm gonna use this time. So let's do this Docker network of LS and we have this test network over here. So I wanted to connect to this particular network this time. So while I start the docker run hyphen p of this particular application, I'm also going to specify hyphen hyphen network. And then I'm going to specify the network as the test network. So this way, this particular container is going to run on this network right now. Right. But guess what? Before I actually start the product API to this network, it is also important that the SQL server that we are running should be in the same network as well. If not, even if I run this guy, it is just going to miserably fail the container like after retrying. So for that reason, I'm going to first attach our SQL server into this particular network. So I'm going to say Docker network connect and it's going to be the test network for the SQL server container, which is currently up and running, which is this container I'm talking about. I wanted to connect to this particular network and let's see if it is connected. So in order to do that, I'm gonna say Docker network inspect of the test network. And you will notice that 
our SQL Server is currently connected to this particular network, which is great. And now I wanted to connect our application as well to this network. So in order to do that, I'm gonna say docker run hyphen p of this, but before that, I'm gonna say network, which is going to be of the test network, something like this. And once I do that, you will notice that this time the application has not thrown us any error and has started executing it this time, which is great. So this is running already. So now if I try to go to our application, which is the local host of the 8080, if you remember, I was giving you the port number. And then if I put slash swagger slash index.html, this is already running. So all these are being served from our Docker container at the moment. So if I just go over here, do you see that this guy, the loving whatever is currently up and running. So let me remove the, uh, or maybe just show only the running container. So you see that only these two containers are up and running. And if I go here, you see that it is not throwing us any exception. So the product API container is currently up and running for us from the image that we have actually built. And now if I try to go back uh, and perform any action for this particular application, if I, if I pass one to get the product ID, it is bringing up all the data from the SQL Server database, in fact. And if you don't believe me, if I just go to the VS Code over here, you will also notice that we have the local host uh, of the SQL Server. It also has got a product DB it has got a table of the product. And if I select the top thousand rows from the particular products, you will see that the first element of this particular database is a keyboard. So it is communicating with this database server and it's getting the value. So let's say if I pass five from the API and if I get the exact same thing that I'm looking for, which is cabinet and business cabinet with lights and it is exactly the same thing, cabinet and business cabinet with lights. So we are now seeing that two containers are talking with each other happily using one network, which is the network that we just created. So if I try to inspect the Docker network again, so Docker network of inspect the test network, you will notice that we will have two containers. One is the loving whatever, which is the product API as we know, and also the SQL server. Both of them are connected to this same network. And you'll notice that the IP address is 172.19.0.2 and three respectively. So they are communicating with each other using the same subnet and the gateway, So which is cool. So it's it is actually working fine for us over here. So this way we can see that there is a communication happening between two containers if they are residing on the same network. And that's how the Docker network is so important while we talk about the Docker itself. Well, as that said, in our upcoming lectures of this course, we'll also use Docker Compose file and how we can use the networking into the Docker Compose file itself so that you don't really have to go through all the pain of connecting to the network by all these manual commands to do these as like how you did over here but you can just specify all of them like a specification in the docker file and as well as in the docker compose file and everything is going to be done for you automatically from the docker compose itself